All right, guys. Hey, welcome back. So uh, let's just hit the ground running here. What we need to do is move forward from the absolute basics, which is, okay, I've got a context here. Let me remind you that if I run it, it will tell me, if anything else, where I'm at in the current match. Uh, but I have literally zero functionality, which is actually telling me to do some matching here. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, kind of figure out what a match is. So I'm going to be a little lazy. I'm probably just going to create a bunch of CS files flat up uh, in regexlib, but you know what? I just don't care. So, okay. Uh, first of all, let's figure out what iMatch is going to be. I don't know what that crap is. Um, okay, iMatch is going to be an interface for every single type of token. So when you have a regular expression token that can be matched, right, I can test if it matches, <clears throat> excuse me, and that will say yes or no. And I can test after that, after it has matched, I can say, do you, I'm sorry, do you have any other options, right? Because uh, what happens in these specific algorithms is really it's just, I'm searching for the first complete successful match. Um, and it can be the case that either, <clears throat> This is going to work, right? Oops, sorry, I called it context. Context. So this will return true when, if I say, okay, let's suppose this token that implements iMatch is a literal character and it's the character capital A, and the current character at the current offset in the context is the capital A, and I call match on it, it's going to, presumably, return true and advance the record pointer that's going to be on uh that's going to be the responsibility of the token to appropriately and correctly move and restore the record pointer so let's suppose i've matched it and then i'm oh there's something downstream that doesn't match it right what's going to happen when i come backwards and i say well um i uh that didn't work out do you have any other options um, if you think about something like repetition, right, so if you have, oh, well, let me give you a sequence of A's between 3 and 10 of them, and you capture a bunch of A's, and you backtrack into that block, which means you've already matched, and that's very important, um, you'll say, well, uh, yeah, I already matched, so um, do you want me to try something else? Yeah, and so during that backtracking process, this method match next is going to get called and it's going to be the guy who's responsible for taking your existing match and rolling it back a step if rolling it back a step makes sense if i say uh my let's suppose my regular expression is something like um a plus then let's say i matched three a's right and then after that i'm expecting a b and then the regular expression thing is consuming this and saying oh you found a b I did not, oh, I'm sorry, I did not find a B, so I need to backtrack. Um, this guy, right, is being compared to a string that looks like this. Mm, F, doesn't matter. Or it could just be missing. This is not going to match this. So it's going to match all of these. It's going to consume one or more of them. And then it's going to get to F and say, well, all right, I'm not, I didn't match this, but I have satisfied the one-to-many condition. So do you match the next guy? And unfortunately the answer is no. So now uh, at this point, right, backtracking regular expressions will go backwards through the tree and say, well, you know, what are all the paths that I didn't go down? Uh, can I try one of those? So it's going to backtrack from, you know, A matching three times to A matching twice. And you'll, you know, you'll move back to here. And then it'll say, okay, how about now? And try and go forward and say, nope, that's a B, that's an A. So let me backtrack again. Here's my single A. Can I go move forward now? Because this whole time, right, this A plus unit has been matched. It's still matching all of these. These are just different ways that it can match. They're, you know, not the first choice, but they're other choices, and that's fine. Um, and really, you know, printing out this sort of ordering, especially when we get to talking about the difference between greedy and lazy, is going to be very helpful. At least it was very helpful for me to kind of understand like, what is happening here? Like, what? why, the, you know, they actually, they explore the same set of solutions, but they explore them in a different order. And if you are smart about the data you're looking at, and you are smart about regular expressions, and you can construct them, 
in a way that's going to uh, be a little more efficient, right, by choosing the short path. But that's sort of besides the point. So, um, okay, I'm now at this point where I've tried to match backwards, and there's I'm right here. I'm on this single A, and I'm I have to match one or more A's, and then I say, is there a B here? And the answer is no, because I'm followed by an A. And so that fails. And now, this, so this token itself, this A plus, this A repeated one or more times, has now failed. And just like it has been, I ask, okay, um, do you have more options? And now, unfortunately, the answer is, well, I had to match one period. So... Since I'm at one right now, no, I fail. And in order to fail correctly, what it needs to do is say, well, for one, this needs to be false, right? I did not match next. I did not match another time. But B, when it fails, it needs to go back and unroll the pointer in the in the string that I'm searching to push it back to where it was when this, you know, A plus B regex was starting to be matched. Otherwise, the the position I was at is completely lost, and that's obviously unacceptable and completely incorrect. So that is the way that these are going to work, right? The forward pass is always going to be, you know, as I descend through, descend, as I advance through my list of tokens, my regular expressions, I'm going to call match and say, did you match? And either the, yes, the answer is yes or no. <laughs> if you matched, great. We alter the context, reflect it, move on to the next token if there's another token in the regular expression, and continue. If um, that fails, then I don't do anything. I just say, no, sorry. And the backtracking algorithm for the tokens preceding me, hopefully, have other options. Otherwise, okay, I guess we didn't match, right? And that's also fine. If I matched and I'm one of these types of expressions that has uh, multiple options, it could have matched different ways. So an easy option would be like A plus or A... 3 to 8, or um, A or B or C or D, right? Alternation would be that, right? Where, like, I, I found one, and I matched the B, but, like, well, okay, there was other options. So if I get matched nexted into, that means I'm being backtracked into. And I could say, well, let me try some of the other options. Maybe this is not B, but B, C. Maybe this one will turn out to be happy for all of you know, my tokens that direction. You never know, right? So each token is going to be atomic, and each token is basically just a, an idiot that knows how to do exactly one thing, and we have to consume them and put them together and implement them correctly so that we can, well, if we're lucky, actually get ourselves some matches here. So, fundamentally, things that can match only need these two functions, right? Given some context, which is my current position and offset, if I call match on you, do you match? Yes or no? That's a yes or no question. If you've already matched, and this is the current state of the context, and I say, do you, sorry, uh, some stuff starts to not work out downstream, do you have other options? And I call match next on you, you either do or you don't. And if you do, great. Then we'll pretend like that's the one we picked, and we'll just keep moving forward. If you don't, then we backtrack and reset everything that I've done here, and we fail, right? That's simply all there is to it. And by simply, I mean that's all there is to a, you know, a matchable item here. Um, and each token, of course, has different little intricacies that are interesting. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, I match interface. So why don't we go and start at the absolute beginning and say what... One thing I might want to match is a, a single character, absolutely bone-dead symbol. So I'm going to name them this way, and I will hopefully be consistent. So let's call this guy Match Char. Um, I'm making this stuff all public now because I just want to be able to pull it up in Regex Lib Tutorial Console and do whatever I want to do. So Match Char, I would like for you to implement iMatch, and please do. So what are some things you're going to need? Well, when I build one of these tokens, I'm going to certainly need a character C, which is going to be the match char. Um, so let me create something for it. So I'll create a public read uh, 
sorry, public read only char c like that, and I will say this c equals that c. It's just that one. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, oh, and you know what? I actually don't like the character C. I'm going to call this something more uh, interesting. Oh, goodness. All right. This right here is an example of what happens when you don't know all the shortcuts in Visual Studio. You go to the object browser, which I don't want to do. I'm going to name this to um, match char. I like to prefix everything with quote match uh, because it sort of makes my life easy. All right, well, shut up then. Uh, reset. Nope. All right. One of these days I'm going to figure this out. Of course. Rename. RR. All right. Boom. Just like that. Now this is redundant. Let's simplify that. Okay. Thank you, C Sharp 6. All right. So, so far I have a token that uh, claims to be matchable. Um, you When you create the token, you have to tell it, well, what the hell am I matching? Um, and uh, if you were to try to actually match on it, it's just going to blow up. So that's highly, highly unfortunate. So let's go through. This is the absolute most trivial case of a matching token. And I'm going to keep saying token very purposefully because this is a degenerate case where it's a very simple fixed single character. Either this is the character at this index or it isn't. That's the only piece of logic I care about. Um, well, as far as evaluating whether or not that's true, what that means in terms of where I need to move the offset for the context is a separate discussion. So let's come in here and let's say, all right, what happens if I'm looking at a regular expression in the context and they call match on me given this context? Well, I can do a couple things. One of the things I could say is if... Um, context offset is greater than or equal to context length, then I'm going to fail, right? And this is a degenerate case. So if the pointer is off the end of the thing I'm trying to match, then there it doesn't matter what I am, I'm not going to match that, right? The string's already over. So this is just a nice immediate fail safe case that goes away. And by goes away, I mean fails and it's not a problem. So let's figure out what the result of our actual computation is going to be. And it's going to be, well, let's check if context dot, uh, I use this thing, current, equals the match char, right? So one way to do context dot current would be to cut this out and say context dot uh, match string of context dot offset but what I would like is for all of this to be wrapped up into something that's very convenient because it's probably going to be the case that I need to just ask the string, like, what are you looking at, right? So let me cut that out and say context dot her, and I'll just use that. That's fine. And somewhere over here I made a field called cur which I don't want that. Uh, sorry, i got to flip back here. And this is going to be a create a property in context. And the get, this current property is going to map to what? Select the wrong stuff. This is going to map to um, match string of offset. And I'm not putting any error handling in here. I would, I'm going to do the minimal thing here because oh, let's face it, I'm lazy. Um, and I just want, I would rather it throw an error if I do have these problems. So, okay, so I can flip back to my match char here, and if the result, if the current character equals the guy I'm trying to match, then I, I'm successful, right? So, if that is in fact true, then context dot offset should be incremented. Right? So that will move us and then we will return the result. Right? So if it fails, of course, I don't change the offset and I return failure. I mean, those are the only two options. Now what's going to happen when I match next? Okay. Um, when I match next, what's 
what's what is this scenario this scenario is I've got my character and it has been matched once so in this case it's a single character a all right you matched an a and the algorithm calls in and says hey match something else and I say no you're an idiot uh, I can only match this character so literally there is nothing for me to do here except to restore the state of the context back to where it was when I saw it last um, and say sorry man no um, and restoring the state is going to become a theme that is actually quite important um, and we're going to have to start adding tools at some point which uh, actually give us this kind of thing so this right here is going to do that for us so let's say I've matched the character A. That's the only thing, literally, that's, I'm a literal character. That's all I can do. And then someone says, oh, sorry, um, some stuff down the stream failed. I got to backtrack into you. Can you do something else? And I say, nope, sorry. Uh, and I do context offset minus minus, right, which is to remove this since that obviously matched. That moves me backwards and un undoes the record offset that I had done. And I say... Sorry, doll, no deal. Um, and I fail. So this right here is a correct way to implement, implement March char that's going to give us the feedback that we want. And also, it's going to maintain the state of the context correctly, um, both under success and failure when match next occurs. So this one cannot succeed. This is the only thing that it needs to do when it fails, is move back a character. All right, well, I was here when I started, and that's when I matched. So I failed, my bad. Uh, the algorithm that's backtracking is going to keep going to the previous guys and keep backtracking. And if they work, maybe there's some other choices, right? And then they'll come back to me. But uh, right now, if I had matched, potentially the context has been modified in some way. And right now it's just the offset, but later it's going to be a lot of other interesting things. Like maybe I matched some capture groups and now that I can't do that anymore I need to go release those capture groups because they just don't count right um so things like that are going to become a little yeah not hard they're just you have to be careful uh but when we match next in this case we just say well I sorry can't do anything else this will reset the context back to the state where it was when the previous token matched if there was a previous token and um okay, you're going to get backtracked into you and you'll do whatever you got to do, right? And now I'm, I'm done doing my work. So this is match char. Unfortunately, this is again getting really long. So uh, uh, I will come back and we will play around with match char to show that it does the thing that we think we hope it does. And um, then we'll start building more interesting things like um, sequences of chars and, or, or, you know, a string perhaps. Um, and other things like... Uh, I don't know, repetition or capture groups or look aheads and all kinds of really interesting things that are really based on the fact that at some level either I matched the char or I didn't, right? I mean, that's ultimately what's going to be happening here. So this is the place to start. And uh, from there, I guess we just go forward. So hope you guys enjoyed it and I will uh, bring up that video as soon as I can. All right, later.